We are live. Right. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sage Turner, Chair of the Housing and Community Development Committee. I'd like to welcome you to our May 22nd remote meeting. All council members and staff are participating virtually today. For those of you out there with us, welcome. To help our audience follow along, I'll be stating each section of the agenda aloud. We are streaming live on our virtual engagement hub, and that's accessible through the virtual engagement hub on the front page of the city's website. We also have an option for the public to listen live by phone. We also have the option for people to call in and comment live during the meeting. So the number to do both is 855-925-2801. That's 855-925-2801. Meeting code is 9791. If you're trying to make a public comment, your phone will be muted and you will hear the meeting live. And at that point, speakers will need to push star three. That's star three to enter a speaker queue. Okay, I'm going to do a quick roll call. Uh, staff and Councilwoman, if you could please say a quick hello when I call your name. Councilwoman Antoinette, Antoinette Mosley. Hello. Uh, Councilwoman Shanika Smith will be absent today. Assistant City Manager Rachel Wood. Good afternoon. Community Economic Development Director Nikki Reed. I think she'll join us. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. I can't see everyone. Thank you. Affordable Housing Officer Sasha Bertinsky. Good afternoon. And Affordable Housing Specialist Kevin Lynn. Hello. Hello. And do we have Janice, Senior Assistant City Attorney Janice, with us today? I wasn't sure if she was going to make it. Okay. Great. So thank you everyone for being here. And we're going to move on to the agenda. First up is approving the minutes from April. There's just two of us. So Antoinette, may I get a motion? Yes, I move that we accept the um, minutes for April 18th as presented. Okay, I will second and I will do a roll call vote. Councilwoman Mosley? Aye. Myself, aye. Okay, the minutes are approved. Quickly moving on to item number two, we're gonna be talking about the affordable housing plan and Sasha Patinsky is gonna walk us through that. Go ahead, Sasha. Thank you, uh, Chair Turner. So I'm Sasha Vertinsky here to give you an update on our affordable housing plan. This is a plan we've been talking about for the last several months uh, internally. Um, next, Katie, thanks. So um, we feel like on that, sorry, we feel on staff that is with the current affordable housing crisis that we've been in for quite a while, it's important for us to have a clear direction for our programs and funding. Our most recent plan came from, you know, it was way back in 2008. And an updated plan will provide an opportunity to engage the community in a comprehensive and coordinated way to help determine the future of our, of our programming. Um, the plan is to use that plan to assist us in leveraging our tools to the greatest extent possible for the community. And the planning process will take place during the next fiscal year, and it will in help inform if there, if there is a, a future affordable housing bond, it would help lay a roadmap for that bond and how we would spend those monies. Next. So just a, a little bit of background. Um, we have 97,000 currently in our budget for this plan. Um, we have requested up to 50,000 from Dogwood Health Trust to make it a more robust process. Um, and this plan would also be informed by AHAC's work and our partnership with Thrive Asheville that City Council uh, funded through an ARPA grant. Um, we've been working with Thrive on some data around equitable outcomes of city programs. And so there, and there, there's a number of other things happening in the community like reparations. Um, all of those efforts would feed into this plan and inform this plan as well. Next. So we are looking to address, assess, and address the current needs for the next five to 10 years for our community. Um, it involve people affected by the housing crisis. And we're really looking for the consultants to look at our city funded programs, so not federal funding, and assess those programs and see what gaps there are and how they can be improved. And so that would include our land use incentive grant program, our housing trust fund, 
and our policies for implementing affordable housing on city owned land. And as I said earlier, it would also provide us a foundation for any future funding and how we're gonna allocate funds in the future. Next. So here's our anticipated project schedule. We released the RFP last Monday. We did a pre-proposal meeting last Friday. We had four or five firms attend that meeting, which was great. Deadline for questions is this coming Wednesday. And then a week later, we will post those answers to those questions. And then late June, we will start the selection process. And our goal here is to get to city council on July 25th with that contract. Um, we will be hearing back from Dogwood Health Trust in end of early of early July, it's supposed to be around that first week of July. And then we're hoping to get started on the project in August. Next. So I'll be the project manager and we will have support from a number of other departments and there may be other departments as you know needed on this list. Of course, CED and planning and equity will all be you know crucial departments as well as finance and the city manager's office and our data and performance office. Next. So those are just the last key takeaways, which I already discussed at the beginning of the meeting, but um, we're really excited about this process. Um, again, since it's been since 2008, really feels like we need a comprehensive look at what we're doing here. Um, and I'd be happy to take any questions from you all. Councilwoman Miller, do you have any questions? I really don't. It seems pretty self-explanatory. Although I was kind of wondering, as it relates to Luigi, what exactly are they going to be looking at? Are they going to look as far as to whether we should continue to do it or not? I think that's definitely on the table. I think um, we're hoping to have consultants who have a broad base of knowledge of what other cities do as well, so they can bring some outside knowledge in terms of what makes sense and in terms of a city and how we spend our resources. Is that the, the best way to be spending some of our crucial resources as well? Okay. So as there is, AHAC is doing some work on an ongoing basis, and we know that. So that will also, on the wage policy and, and looking at the scoring, and that will also all feed into this planning process. Okay, thanks. I have a couple questions. Um, I guess the big question for me in this study, hopefully is addressing it, is that timeline of when already existing Luigi's already granted and in place Luigi's and HTF loans are coming back to us, like when they finalize or hit their payout or when the tax money comes back. I'm kind of looking for, for me to measure whether or not Luigi is a good tool, I would need that whole picture, right? So is right. that going to be in this? Are we going to, okay, that is, that's great. I, mean, I, think, um, I think, I guess I'm sorry, just to answer that a little bit more fully, leading up to the consultant starting, staff's going to be spending a significant amount of time getting data ready for them and doing some of that analysis. Um, okay. So that when, you know, and they, and then, yeah, go ahead. So, okay. So I'm also hoping, like we mentioned some other staff departments that'll be working on this, but you're also kind of overseeing this missing middle study. And I'm thinking there might be some overlap in the two studies, I'm but definitely I know not. this is specific to our programs. I'm definitely not overseeing the missing middle stuff. Not. <laughs> that is okay. in planning and urban design. Okay. But um, but yes, that thank you for reminding me. That is actually also on my list of other efforts that are happening. It's in the RFP that the consultant needs to be aware of that that's happening. Um, we definitely want to make sure that those... Yeah, because if we're... If it's almost interesting to say, you know, do our existing tools do what we need, should there be more tools, what are they, and then also our zoning, right? Like just our, we know for a long time that our own zoning and length of review can also hinder affordability. So I'm hoping some of that leaks in there or has some. Yes, yes, for sure. We, um, okay. There's some, there's a part of the RFP that addresses land use and zoning and, and also um, we're looking at doing some land analysis really about like where some of this can happen and what land is available and that may not, the consultant may not do that, but I think we're developing a plan to get that done either in-house or with like an 
NC State GIS master student. They've helped us with some projects like that. So okay. trying to pull as many resources together. Okay. And, yeah. okay. And then you mentioned Thrive and, you know, with overlapping reparations commitment and all these goals in the community. What about the county? Because sometimes for a long time now, I've hoped that the county would participate in a Luigi-like program. And even if they did it as a pilot or something, are they not at the table in any of this? I I still need to discuss some of that with Matt Cable. Um, we definitely want to include them as a partner and an important partner. Um, as it relates to city of Asheville funding, for sure. And then similar, I don't know that the TDA will need to be involved, but I know we have this pending conversation in the community about whether or not some of the uh, lodging tax may or may not become available as an annual fund for affordability. So I don't want to alienate that body if we're also going to be looking to them for resources. So I don't know how they come into play here, but we may want to at least have discussions with them or I don't know, find out if that's an option that's going to come. And then, um, yeah, I guess the only other question I had, and this is more of a data piece that you're probably doing, so maybe it's a question for Councilwoman Mosley, is ATAC still reviewing a pipeline document that shows projects in queue, projects as they complete, the AMIs they're targeting? Is that still happening? Well, actually, you have both co-chairs here, so they can update you with. Yeah. Okay, Margie. Yeah. Are you guys doing that still? You're Margie. You're muted. <laughs> not so much recently. We have not been doing that. Um, I don't think that's been part of our um, <clears throat> the information that we get. Um, so. Um, we would be glad to do that, and we used to. We may not do. And I'm, I'm mm -hmm. working, we are working. It's a helpful updating. document. Sorry, we're working on updating that document right now so that we can keep oh. it more up to date, so. Yeah, somehow to keep it going naturally would be helpful. Like, I did receive an email from a developer today, this morning, that said, you know, there's just not enough residential construction happening in downtown. And I immediately thought, gosh, I can think of like five big projects. So that pipeline document keeps the public informed too. Um, yeah. Okay, those are all my questions. I'm excited about this because 2008 is a long time ago, and I'm confident in our tools, but I think we can always sharpen our tools. So I'm looking forward to this, and the timeline looks great. It looks like in August we're going to have some finality and to council in July, so it's going to move quick. That's all my questions. Councilman Mosley, anything else coming up for you before we move on? Okay, awesome. Well, thank you for the intro on this. Um, hopefully we get some great respondents. That will conclude item number two on our agenda, the affordable housing plan. We're going to move on to item number three, also led by Sasha, and it's about the micro apartment situation compliance. Thank you. So, yes, um, and you can. So back in, I believe it was February, um, the HCD community, sorry, HCD committee, you can go ahead, Katie, that's fine. Um, asked AHAC to review and discuss the Luigi policy as it relates to micro units. There had been, there was an application in front of you for 46 Aston, and there was some uncertainty, I think, both um, for staff as well around what is the best use, how does Luigi address micro units, and what is an appropriate subsidy for these kinds of projects. So after Three months of consideration, um, AHAC is re recommending the delayed consideration of Luigi applications and awards for micro apartments until the entire policy is re reconsidered and revised. And Andy Barnett and Margie Bukowski are both here. They're co-chairs of AHAC. Um, and so in response, staff looked at all of their input and seriously considered everything and, and staff recommend, is recommending alignment with that recommendation. and that. City Council temporarily suspend consideration of those applications, which would require council action. Next. So the current Luigi policy is silent on micro apartments. Um, micro apartments are typically smaller than a studio unit. So a micro housing unit might be 250 to 400 square feet. Studio units, 400 to 650 and one bedroom 650 to 750. 
I spent a lot of time trying to understand the differences between micro apartments and studios and efficiencies, and they're all very close to each other overall. Um, Appendix one, which is what we use to determine allowable rents, um, doesn't have rents outlined for micro apartments. It does have an asterisk saying um, something like, you know, rents may be different for micro apartments. So it, it kind of hints at this, you know, it doesn't have to be what's here on this chart. Um, and so, as I already said, you know, you all asked AHAC to look at this and AHAC spent quite a bit of time looking at the issues, pretty much almost your entire April and May meetings they spent discussing this. Next. So um, I could go over this slide. We didn't rehearse this, but um, just generally here were the, here were the specific concerns and issues that AHAC raised. Um, should they, and these, this is AHAC's wording, I will say, it's not staff's writing. Um, should the incentives be adjusted to account for smaller unit size? Does the smaller unit size and shared kitchen concept meet the needs of those seeking affordable housing? So there were some questions around that. And um, AHAC members felt like micro housing rents in other cities appeared to be substantially below market rents so that maybe they don't need subsidies to be built um, to be affordable, built and affordable. And then there's a questions around whether or not these units would meet qualifications for vouchers. And I, I'm gonna take a pause here and ask Margie or Andy if there's anything you'd like to add here or round well, out the discussion. Go ahead. I'm going to just say that that we've we spent a lot of time on this, and um, we've listened to David, and we understand where David's coming from. I, I don't want uh, the client to think that we do not, uh, because we do understand where he's coming from. But we had significant concerns that perhaps rather than just singling out that project, the micro housing should be part of the bigger revision that we're working on and we'll have put together uh, in November. And so we need to adjust everything <clears throat> and include that in there. So um, we, you know, there's just, there's a lot of things to think about. And um, we felt like, you know, we don't know if the, um, maybe he has market data, I'm not sure, but, um, is this right for where we are uh, in downtown Asheville? Yes, there's a need for one bedrooms, but there's also a need for other types of housing. And um, I just, I think we thought, well, we, we just need to take a step back and include it in the larger, larger project. Andy, you wanna address that too? Sure, I, I can jump in Margie. I mean, I think you've, uh, you and Sasha have captured this well. Um, the most of the concerns uh, that were surfacing around micro units in our discussion uh, were in some way applicable to other kinds of projects coming uh, seeking Luigi funding. So things like the level of voucher acceptance or um, the preservation of particular units for uh, for voucher holders, and it was very difficult for us to um, you know carve out a set of requirements that applied only to micro units um, that didn't apply generally to, you know, most of the other projects that we might see uh, seeking uh, grants under Luigi. So uh, given the the fact that we we're, you know, midstream on a process to, to address that policy anyway, um, you know, what, what we're recommending is that, uh, you know, council table um, micro unit uh, applications, um, or if we feel like they're time sensitive and they need to move forward, we would ask that, uh, you know, that HCD uh, try to address the four questions that uh, that Sasha has on this slide um, before, they, before they're approved. So, I mean, those really hit the things that um, were the biggest concerns to the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee. Appreciate that, co-chairs, and thank you for stepping up to be co-chairs. Um, it occurs to me that, you know, I always like to remind us that we are under a boards and commissions kind of 
review itself, and then HCD and AHAC are kind of the pilot. So HCD literally said, hey, AHAC, will you spend some time looking at this? So as a matter of principle, I'm kind of like, well, we should listen to what they said because we went to them for their advice. So um, has anyone talked to the developer of this project that is in queue and seeking a Luigi for micro units through this? And is the delay a problem for them? Does anybody have concrete information on that? Because I'm getting a little, I thought it was, but then an email suggested maybe it wasn't. So no, he did, we may all be before, on the same page. He did appear before two times. They had twice to okay. discuss this. I want to yeah, clarify. Though, this if, if I can. Time. Oh, go ahead. Go oh, ahead. Sorry, I want okay, to clarify if I can. The, although the developer on the Aspen project did uh, present to AHAC, we were not making decisions based on this project. Uh, so our recommendations right. are, are based on our interpretation of the policy and, and what's best in you know, its application to multiple projects. Sure, and that's as you should. So thank you for that. I guess what my concern is would be losing, I think it's several hundred units downtown of which 60 or so maybe voucher accepting. If that project were going to fall apart because we're delaying decision, I would wanna know. But that's really what I'm getting at. And perhaps the developer is listening and could get in touch. Um, I also you know, want to okay, mention, I have a go ahead. Sage, that he, um, the first project that he was going to do that was micro units, he has not built that yet. He did get money for that, but he has not built that yet. As everyone is aware, cost and escalation of everything has is, is gone up. So that first one is not built yet. And so... Right. Um, the second one would be, you know, obviously delayed and being billed also. So, um, you know, I think that's something to, to think about is that we don't even have the first one and know how that has gone or uh, how that would has been accepted and, and that type of thing before we jump on to the next one. Right. And... And that is partly why I thought that a delay would be a non-issue for all parties. Um, but perhaps that developer will reach out because I mean, you're I, looking for action. So, so correct me if I'm mistaken, even though in the last AHEC you weren't specifically talking about this one, did the developer not say that a delay in Luigi would not play into whether he would move forward. In other words, he did speak about increase in costs, but those increase in costs were not necessarily related to whether an answer regarding Luigi had to be done immediately. Is that what was said in the last AHEC meeting? Anybody jump in? That's what I heard, but I want to make sure. I would say that in not this last one, but the one before, actually he was at city council when he said that he was going to move forward and build this project with or without Luigi. But he did say, I mean, he is experiencing uh, escalation in, in costs and we understand that. Um, but if he's going to go ahead and build it anyway, to wait until we have the full policy seems to make more sense to me. I think he started to maybe, I don't want to misrepresent anything, but I thought I heard some kind of backing off of that statement um, of what you were just saying, Councilwoman Mosley. Um, and partly what I'm going back to in my mind is like the, the purpose of the policy is to subsidize the rents it's not to make a project viable to be built or not. It's really just about that gap in rents. So I might be misunderstanding something here. And, and the, the, the grant he applied for is a lot of money. It's $1.9 million. So over how like many years? How many years of subsidy uh, did equal? I want to, I think it was okay. 21 because. I mean, he's he's just so centrally located Mac. there that you get a lot right. of just for being near transit. Um, but it's so much investment that I feel like it has to be carefully considered. And so, 
Antoinette, I see you. And Sasha, to that point you're making, this is why that table of when HTF and Luigi items come back online is so important to me, right? Because if we knew, I think our first Luigi that was properly used was only like four years ago, it was the 360 Hilliard. So maybe everything is really far out. But I, without the whole picture, I have a hard time on this. And I don't think that we should adjust policy specific to a project, right? And I, I can see that AHAC is trying to back away from that too. But I'm also concerned about affordable housing and downtown construction. Like I want to see this project go forward if it can work and if it's great for all of the renters. I, you know, I think we do need a diverse housing inventory. So I'm not, I'm not sure. Like, I don't know if this is something that HCD should weigh, if we should delay it, if we should bring it to all of council, but I'm a little concerned. I guess I want to hear from, I'd like to hear if this project may can wait. If it can wait, then I'm not concerned. I don't think we have like five other micro unit applications out there, you know? So here's what I would say, and I would bring up a point of order, because if we're talking about the policy then that I believe to be appropriate for today. If we're talking about one developer in particular, it needs to be a conversation with the developer and it needs to be on the agenda. So discussion of this unit as a point of order isn't necessarily appropriate at this time. So there, is a, motion, there is a motion that is requested that I guess I can make and you can vote no for, or yes for, but they're two different issues because what is asked of us today is a broad issue relating to micro units in general. But it would affect the right. application, right? Con correct. That's in, it would affect that developer. It would. And Janice, I hear you, Sasha, that a Luigi Janice, is not you, supposed to make or break a project. Janice, can you step in on this? Because I'm wondering. I think you're correct, Councilwoman Mosley, in the that, that this and 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 AHAC was very careful about this, as Andy stated, that you know, they were at first when it went to AHAC, they said we're not comfortable making a decision about a particular project. And I clarified for them, and Sasha did as well, that the question to them was the policy. Is Luigi, um, should it apply or how should it apply if it does to these micro units? So we are talking about the policy, but then yes, so the policy, so if you voted and council voted to put a pause on uh, consideration of micro housing, then it would affect the project. I suppose that project could still come forward and be considered separately and say, I know you just passed this policy, but again, council, HCD, will you let me do, will you let me go forward? So I'd handle it that way. Do the policy, if they want to request, just as any other time, they, they could re still request um, uh, an exception to the policy. Waiver, exception to that That's policy. Great. That's very helpful, Janice. Thank you. That that will help my vote as well. Um, and I do want to say, just while we're on the context of policy and micro units, and maybe I should have mentioned this when we were talking about the previous agenda item, but it's interesting to hear this coming down to the size of the unit because on the flip side, on the larger side, I hear this similar conversation for three bedroom units and that the subsidy does not play out. Like we're not getting a lot of three bedroom units because the increase from a two bedroom to a three bedrooming cost is significant, but the subsidy is tiny. So we're having this conversation on both ends. For policy reasons, I think it just all needs to be reviewed. Andy, go ahead. Well, that was the, the a great example of the point that we were trying to make that this, uh, um, we really need to think about this in terms of the full Luigi policy. The other, uh, I just remind the councilwoman that the the recommendation AHAC is making leaves you room to approve specific projects. We just ask for a, you know, uh, some additional questions to be answered by the developer in the application process and the review process. If you decide to, um, you know, to take a look at uh, individual projects before we're, we've 
given you the revisions to the full policy. Did this person submit a public comment ahead of time that I have not seen? I'm getting a message about that they submitted a public comment wishing that this item be voted on, not delayed. Is there a public comment on this? Okay, so we're just not there yet. Okay. Um, I hadn't oh, seen sorry. it. I apologize. It must have been an email. Sorry, there was an email that went out to all of you all. And I got it as well. And it did go to public input. I don't know if it didn't register, but so it is. Okay. It, so perhaps rate, the email I got this morning. And at any rate, a vote okay. on that particular project would not be what is would be considered policy? today because there hasn't been an amendment to the agenda to add it. Right. Okay. I got gotcha. you. And you're correct. Okay. So the motion or the potential motion ahead of us is to, for council to um, stop considering any micro housing applications until this study is completed. It needs to have nothing to do with this project in a literal manner right now. Um, okay. Katie, can you go a couple? I think I'm, I'm clear. Keep going. Keep going. So that was our recommended motion for you all. I don't know if you want to amend it or not. But. So I'm comfortable with this just because of the temporarily suspend language. So it's not a no or a yes for any um, application in particular. And there's nothing that right. says an applicant can't seek um, an exception to the proposed policy if it goes through. Correct, Janice? Right. And I think that's probably the route we're going to end up going here. So if the developer is listening, they could certainly bring that project anyways. But on a policy level, it sounds like we're going to have a motion that looks like this and suspend it on the basis of needing more input and just opening up the whole policy in general. And I think I'm comfortable with that, knowing that the developer developer could still bring it outside of that recommendation. So, okay. Any other thoughts or comments on this particular item before a motion is made? Anyone from AHAC wish to speak? I know I'm getting messages from your old chair. <laughs> okay. I do. All right. Councilman Mosley, did you want to? Oh, go ahead, Sasha. I have a procedural question, but it could wait for your motion if you want. I guess my, my question is around if he wanted to come forward, I think right now this is scheduled for late June city council. Um, if he wanted to come to your next HCD meeting on June 20th, are you saying that's okay? I mean, you know, I think at this point there's like a, it's just a procedural fairness. So if a developer wants to bring an ask or a community member or any kind of group wants to bring an ask to council, they can. If it doesn't apply to a particular policy, that's what we're there for to review, right? So I think if they request still coming to our meeting, then we should grant that request, in my opinion. If you, for a future HCD, I think that would be fine, knowing that this policy may or may not be in place. I mean, I don't see why we wouldn't, personally. Councilman Mosley, do you have any input on that? I'm fine either way. When did they request to get back on the agenda? I thought the reason they it sounds want like they requested to be on this agenda is what I'm hearing. But again, I'm getting messages in the middle of a meeting, and I have not heard from this developer. But it sounds like Barry Bialik is saying he requested to be on this agenda. Did Barry request? You're saying the developer requests. I really don't like to do things on a message in the middle of a meeting. So well, if, it, I could, if I could, I maybe shouldn't even have said anything. If I could. So the original mm -hmm. plan was for AHAC's recommendation to come back and his project to come back at the same time. But staff realized that that didn't mm -hmm. make sense because it's, it's asking you to do two different things right in the same meeting. And it didn't seem fair to, you know, anyone involved really. So um, I think the thought was okay. to bring this to you all today, let you consider it, and then if you want him to have the chance to come forward, then, then you all can say that. 
that. So I think that was staff's intention to kind of try to further separate the two issues a little bit. Um, so. Right. It's hard when there's an active application. I think, thank you, AHAC, for recognizing that and trying to stay clear of that. Okay, um, we're about to have a motion and it sounds like we have, do we have public comment or no? That wasn't an official public comment that was emailed in or no? The, it sounded like it went to public. It was, official, it was an official public comment mailed in. I mean, it was. Okay, okay. But it, All right. But there Go may be somebody on the line. I don't know. Okay. Councilwoman Mosley, we're ready for you to make a motion if you like. Okay, I move to recommend that City Council temporarily suspend consideration of land use incentive grant applications for micro apartment projects until the policy is revised and includes standards for micro apartment projects. I will second that. And only two of us who are, well, let's see, public comment, is anyone on the line? Yes, we do. Katie? Okay. One moment. Thank you. Caller ending in 3781. Your line is now open. Hey, everybody. This is actually Barry Bialik. Um, and I just wanted to kind of share some background. Like, this was something I as chair and why we struggled so much. We felt so uncomfortable with this being asked to change policy mid application. And it just felt really uncomfortable and not right. Um, it's like changing the rules of a game while you're in the middle of playing it. And my understanding is this application was supposed to, was wanting to be considered. And then policy, this, the discussion about now of changing policy is before the discussion of the application, which just feels so wrong. So I just needed to register that. And um, you know, we tried in our motion to make an out that there was a way, um, you know, to set aside the, you know, set aside a higher percentage of units were affordable, but this whole thing just feels wrong to me. It feels really wrong to publicly change a policy based on an application. And I understand it's a policy change, but it's in the middle of an application that hasn't been voted up and down. You, you definitely need to clarify with the developer, but my understanding is he wanted it on this meeting and he wants the no, he was happy. He he wanted a yes or no vote so you can then talk to full council about it. But I, I just feel, I feel wrong about all of this. And I just feel like I need to share that and take you take that into consideration for your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Do we have any other callers? Yes, we do. One moment. Be the developer. Caller ending in 3825. Your line is now open. Hello. Um, this is David Moritz. I'm the developer of the 46 Aston project. And I'd like an opportunity to comment um, on this, if that's okay. For it. Just want to make sure, I, am, am I on the call? Yes, please proceed. Okay. Um, so I guess the first question, I have, I have a few points. I did send in a letter uh, yesterday um, because it was my understanding uh, a week ago that we were going to be coming in front of the committee and uh, I was prepared to speak about our project on the regular scheduled meeting which was Tuesday May 16th actually I, I wasn't even informed that that meeting was canceled someone else informed me by text and that my project was not going to be on the agenda and that the meeting was rescheduled for the 22nd so um, it wasn't by my request that we weren't on the agenda and I was informed. Um, so I, I don't really have, um, I don't know what the process is to, to, to make sure we're on the agenda. But yes, we would like to be on the agenda. We made our application in October. Uh, so it's been seven months. We did agree. I, I did uh, attend the AHAC meeting um, and I did comment there. There was some questions about whether we'd be okay with delaying our meeting briefly, and I was amenable to that. But I, it was never my intention to wait for a project for a policy review, which I 
don't have any idea what the timing would be. Um, the fact that we haven't started our first project is irrelevant to this project. We might do them at the same time. Um, but as many of you know, doing a project is very complicated, requires a significant amount of different resources, including a bank. So we need to know whether or not um, we are going to get the Luigi grant uh, when we do our discussions with the bank, when we do our discussions with investors to understand whether or not we can do the project. The way the costs are going, um, we may not do the project if we don't get the grant. Um, the other thing I, I have a question about is, are there any other micro apartment projects being proposed that are coming to the committee? Because if not, it feels very much like we are being singled out. Um, because I don't understand the need to review or redo a policy if there are no other micro apartment projects in the pipeline or being considered at all. So this very much seems like we're being singled out specifically. Um, and I'd like to understand um, that because there, I understand these questions that I've addressed them in, in my email. Um, one of them is actually quite simple to figure out and only required a call to the housing authority that our units are acceptable for vouchers. Okay, so that question is answered. The other one with respect to the unit sizes. Caller, you your know, time is now up. In other words, you hit three Hello? minutes, but I think I was able to gain from this what you were saying. So here's my recommendation. So we're about to have this motion. We're going to vote on it today. If it doesn't if we move forward with this and it's supportive that we're going to reevaluate the policy and hold off on micro unit um, applications until that policy review is complete, then um, as our assistant manager or attorney said, you the developer would be able to bring a project regardless. So I'm going to say that we, I'm going to move us forward on this motion. It sounds like there's going to be support to delay it. To the developer's end, if you wish to be on the HCD agenda next time to be heard anyways, I think that that is, to the developer, that public comments point, I think that is fair and right and just because they have put it in an application and we have to answer it. We just have to answer it. If it's a no, it's a no. But I don't think it's not fair to someone to be extended for over, I mean, it's already seven months. So I'm going to suggest that that person that just called request to be on a future agenda, and then we move forward with um, HCD moving this policy recommendation to council today. And they can, as Janice said, move around that if needed. And I think that's going to be the only path that I see forward right now. Um, and maybe, I mean, I'm generally supportive of this. <clears throat> I don't have the concerns that um, it sounds like some of AHAC did. I think we need all the housing we can get, all the affordability we can get, all the vouchers we can get. So, you know, what this does, I don't want this developer to feel singled out. I want it, I actually want them to feel protected because a no could be a bad thing. And we are trying to figure out how to make this work and to circumvent a possible no. So it, it can be seen both ways. Um, is that all of our public comment? Let me reload one moment. Yes, that was it. Okay, so we have a motion on the table. We're about to do a roll call vote. I will follow up with that public comment and developer if needed personally to make sure we're all on the same timeline. They understand their trajectory and path forward. Um, and I'm going to go to roll call vote. Councilman Mosley. Aye. Myself, aye. Okay, so this re recommendation will move to council. And Margie, I see you have your hand up. Go ahead. I just wanted the developer to understand that that AHEC is reviewing the entire Luigi policy, not just something for micro units. We are doing the entire policy in general for everything so that he does right. not need to feel singled out at all. Right. And that wouldn't be fair. And I, I do, um, just for context, I am speaking to another developer that has not yet put in an application that is concerned about the three bedroom versus two bedroom subsidy. So there are other reasons this policy is being opened up and other projects that are in the wings waiting to hear how this you term comes to a conclusion. So in all fairness, there's a lot of people out there waiting to see how this comes together. We have a good timeline on it. We're going to move forward with this recommendation to council at the end of, I guess, the second meeting in June is what I heard. 
Um, okay. And with that, I'm going to close down item number three on our agenda. Everybody good with that? Okay. Moving on to item number four is just public comment in general. Do we have any public comment in general? Not about that item. The only individuals uh, we have in the queue have already spoken. Okay. Then there will be no additional public comment. I am not clear. I don't have the meeting the next meeting in, in front of us. I would like to announce it, but I don't have it in front of me. Um, okay, that is all the items on our agenda today. I will reach out to that developer after this meeting to make sure everybody's on the same page. Other than that, I don't see that we have anything else left and we can adjourn. Oh, Rachel, I see a hand up. I'm sorry, go ahead, Rachel. Um, currently, the, the next scheduled HCD meeting is June 20th. Okay, June 20th, thank you. All right. That's it for me. Anyone else before we adjourn? Okay. Thank you everyone for your time today. I hope I know that was a challenging conversation both at AHAC for several months and here today, but we will sort through it. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you for your time. We're adjourned.